And uh, do you, uh, sir, can you tell the court, uh, do you have any children? <laughs> I have one daughter, uh, Fonnie Willis. Okay. And um, I want to direct your attention uh, back to 2019, okay? Uh, yes. Back in 2019, uh, can you tell the court, uh, did you move uh, here to Atlanta? I was living in uh, Johannesburg, South, uh, South Africa. Um, and unfortunately, for some reasons, I could not get an extended visa. When I retired from the practice of law in 2018, I moved to South Africa. And uh, I had to leave South Africa, and I did then come to Atlanta. Okay, and do you, sir, uh, remember about uh, the time period uh, in 2019 uh, when you uh, moved in with your daughter here in Atlanta? It would have been the spring or summer of 2019. And um, after you moved here, um, did you uh, get a driver's license to kind of confirm your residency with yeah. Atlanta? <laughs> well, <laughs> my driver's license for the District of Columbia was going to expire on my birthday, which is in October. And yes, I did get a license here in uh, the state of uh, Georgia. Your Honor, may I approach the witness? Mm -hmm. Just take a look at what's been uh, right. Okay, Your Honor, would you, if you don't mind, I'm, my eyes are very bad, which is one of the reasons I retired, and so I need um, a magnifying glass. So I'll be Whatever constantly. You need. Thank you. Yes, I, I see it was issued on nine twenty-eight. 2019. Okay. So before we get there, um, do you uh, do you recognize State's Exhibit 2? Yeah, it's just my driver's license. Okay. And um, is State's Exhibit 2 a fair and accurate copy of your uh, physical driver's license? Absolutely. Uh, this time around, the state would tender what's been marked as State's Exhibit 2 into evidence. Okay. Uh, seeing no other objections, it's submitted. State's Exhibit 2 is submitted for the record. <laughs> now, uh, Ms. Uh, and for the record, Your Honor, um, the state is going to supplement State's Exhibit 2 with a redacted copy of the license. Um, the current copy is not redacted with the address and things of that nature. Right. Do we need to mark that differently in any way? I will mark it as State's Exhibit 2A. Perfect. Uh, now, uh, you talked about when your driver's license uh, was issued. Can you tell the court um, when was that driver's license here, uh, your Georgia driver's license issued? It was uh, on... Uh on 9-28-2019. Okay, so September 28th, 2019. Now, when you moved into um, District Attorney Willis's home, um, who lived there? Well, my da daughter lived there, I lived there, and from time to time, uh, our grandchildren would, uh, my grandchildren would, would come. Okay, and uh, did your grandchildren, were they at school coming and going? As Exactly. Uh, I think um, they were in school in various uh, jurisdictions. And during the time, how long did you live um, at or with Miss Willison um, at her home here uh, in Fulton County? She was forced to move after she was elected. About, I mean, I don't know if you want me to go through the whole thing, but that, uh, Your Honor, if Your Honor will indulge me. Um, after she was sworn in, she was sworn in on January 1 of uh, 2021. And on or about the 3rd of February, um, at probably 5, 5.30 a.m. in the morning, um, there were people outside her house uh, cursing and yelling and calling her the B word and the N word and just, I mean, it was... It, bizarre, okay? I mean, just... Sorry, but so, pause, pause, sir. <laughs> Mr. Arbani, here's the objection to you. Uh, he, I would say it's effect on the listener. I mean, he was present while all of these things were occurring. But I can... No, no, no I, that's... And he's saying he was personally present to hear these things? Yes. Okay, overall. Okay, and... Okay, uh, Dad on the stand, we'll get a break here. Uh, we're in the lunch break in New Hampshire. Actually, we're in the lunch break in Georgia, too. This was earlier today, so um, we're having an opportunity to watch Bonnie Willis's father testify. Back with more. Right after this. Yeah. Oh, gosh.
Fox Court TV Live along with Julia Janae. I'm Ted Rollins. Busy Friday. We're uh, watching this hearing uh, in Atlanta, Georgia, while we're on the lunch break up in New Hampshire. Uh, and it is fascinating because the question, of course, is does Fannie Willis keep her role in this prosecution against former President Donald Trump. Right, should she be disqualified? And right now they are calling witnesses just for the judge, no jury to make a decision on that disqualification request by the defense. The allegation is that she had a romantic relationship with a special prosecutor that she hired and that she financially benefited from the trips that she went on with him. She denies being in a relationship with him until after she appointed him. She He was appointed in November of 2021, so there there are questions about whether they were together, whether he went to this townhouse that she lived in. Let's go into the court for more testimony from the father of Fonnie Willis. The state called him to the stand, John Floyd III. Fortunately, the neighbors uh, called the police and uh, disbanded, uh, you know, disbanded the group. And, you know, it was just, uh, I mean, it was just... <laughs> I hadn't seen anything exactly like it before. Okay. And after that happened, uh, can you tell uh, the court um, that Miss Willis would have to move from her home? Yes, she was forced to, to leave. Okay. And um, can you tell the court uh, after she was forced to leave, uh, shortly after she was uh, sworn in, uh, did you remain at her, her home in Fulton County? Yes, I stayed there uh, really until uh, 2022, I guess. And um, from what you described, uh, did you fear for her safety? Absolutely. I mean, um, not only did I do that, I mean, the uh, South uh, Fulton police, uh, they had they brought somebody, a man with a dog, because there have been so many death threats. Uh, uh, and they said they were going to blow up the house. They were going to kill her. They were going to kill me. They were going to kill my grandchildren. I mean, on and on and on. It just uh, it became and I was concerned for her safety. And um, after those concerns came to your, your attention and after what you heard and saw uh, that, that day, uh, you remained at the house? Yes. And can you tell the court, um, with what you just described, why did you remain uh, living at Ms., uh, the district attorney's home here in Fulton County? I'm sorry, I just, I had to tell Mr. I believe it's relevant based on uh, a lot of the questions that were asked yesterday of Ms. Willis as to um, about this security threat and the fact that um, it was implied that those threats were not necessarily um, real in the sense that Mr. Uh, Floyd remained in the home. There were many questions about the fact that he remained and her children uh, could still come and go to the house. I think it's relevant based to the testimony that was elicited from defense counsels uh, yesterday. Well, these um, South Fulton police, first they put a car in front of the house that was there permanently, um, a police car. That was thing one. Thing two, they brought a person uh, with a dog sometimes more than uh, once a day, twice a day, and they would circle the house to look for, for bombs. Um, I knew that that was a house that my daughter had worked for, for. It was a brand new house. She's the only one who would ever live there. It's a four bedroom, brand new house. And I wanted to, somebody needed to protect the house. And I stayed there to basically take care of the house, uh, to take care of the yard, to take care of that. Also, somebody sprayed, um, um, again, the B word and the N word on the house. and. I don't think my daughter even knew that. Uh, I cleaned it off and called the police and South uh, Fulton Police. They have, I'm sure, all the records of all the things that happened. And all of the neighbors, uh, I notified all the neighbors to look out and to watch out. And it was just, it was so crazy. I mean, it was just so crazy. We'd have people would show up in, in park car. There was a guy parked for probably eight hours out in front of the, the house. Uh, you know, it was just, and we'd call the police and yeah. Now, uh, at the time that you uh, lived there with Miss Willis, and um, I guess even when you remained, so during the time period of 2019 to uh, the end of uh, 2020, uh, are you aware um, if Miss Willis uh, was dating someone? Yeah, she she did. She had she had a boyfriend when I first got there. And uh, did you meet uh, her boyfriend? Yeah, I met him often. 
Okay, and can you, did you know him by any specific uh, specific nickname? Yeah, Deuce. Okay, and okay. can you tell the court um, why you were living there? Um, how often would you see him? Sometimes every day, sometimes, you know, every other day. He uh, uh, was a disc jockey or something, and he had all this paraphernalia that I'd have to move out. It was, a, you know, a thing with the keyboard, I mean, uh, things that play music and so forth. So, so. Now, when you moved in uh, in 2019 and then throughout the years uh, in your 2020, 2021, had you ever... Um, met someone named Nathan Wade? I did not meet Nathan Wade until 2023, about a year ago when a reporter by the name of Isakoff interviewed me. I met him, that was the first time I had met him. You said that was in 2023? 2023, right. And I know you said you hadn't met him uh, until uh, 2023, but when you were living at um, Miss Willis's house in Fulton County, uh, did you ever meet Mr. Wade in uh, the year 2019? Absolutely not. How about in the year 2020? Absolutely not. Did you ever see Mr. Wade at Miss uh, Willis's uh, Fulton County house in the year two, uh, 2021? Never. And is it your testimony that the only time or the first time uh, that you met Mr. Wade was in uh, 2023? Let me say something. Mr. Wade said that he remembers seeing me, and I do remember some banter. I, I'm a member of Kappa Alpha Psi fraternity, and there's kind of this thing that goes on between fraternities. And Mr. Wade is a member of Alpha Phi Alpha, and they, you know, so they. I do remember there was some kind of banter when my daughter was sworn in to be district attorney between me and a couple of guys, and he said he remembers me. I don't remember him. And um, prior to uh, that experience that you're talking about, uh, as well as, uh, I guess, your official meeting in 2023, had you ever even heard his name? No, never. I don't think I have any further questions, Your Honor. Ms. Merchant. Yes, thank you, Judge.